Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. And I am two days away from seeing Halloween Kills. I see it Thursday night, 7.30. So today we're gonna to talk about, since we just did John Carpenter's Halloween, the 4K edition from Scream Factor just released, we're gonna talk about 2018's Halloween. Now after Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, the Weinstein Brothers, where they still own the rights, they were gonna do a Halloween 3, Halloween 3D with the team that brought us My Buddy Valentine in 3D. Finally, the rights went to Jason Blum and back to Universal. Universal had really nothing to do with the franchise since part three, when they released part three, Season of the Witch. And David Gordon Green and Danny McBride had a pitch that they liked to bring back Michael Myers to the big screen and ignore all the sequels, which I know is a point of contention for some folks. I didn't mind because by this point, there's so many different iterations of this story and so many different storylines. Really, it was the only way to make any of it make sense was just to cut out all the sequels and just make a direct sequel to the original film. So I always liked that idea. So they pitched it to Carpenter because they were trying to get Carpenter involved. Jason Blum happened to get Carpenter involved by having him executive produce the film, give his blessing to the film, and then he scored the film and the score is utterly fantastic. David Gordon Green directed this film. This film came out October 19th of 2018. It's rated R, hour and 46 minutes long, had a budget of $10 million and in October was a huge Hit, widely successful, made 159 in America and 255 worldwide. Opening weekend, this was already the highest grossing Halloween film of all time. The other notable thing about this film is Jamie Lee Curtis came back yet again. Jamie Lee Curtis had done part one and part two, but she had nothing to do with the franchise until 98 when she came back for H2O. And she was in the beginning of Resurrection, which that movie sucks. And then she was talked into coming back for this film. Judy Greer plays her daughter, Karen, and they have a very rocky relationship. And Annie Madchuk plays her granddaughter, Allison. James Drew Courtney plays The Shape. Nick Castle makes cameos as The Shape in this film, as he was the original Shape back in Carpenter's original film. And Will Patton plays Officer Hawkins, and it's always nice to see Will Patton show up. Being in this film, we're introduced to two podcasters, and they're going to visit Michael Myers at this psychiatric hospital. And Dr. Sartain, who's basically the new Loomis, or even references him in New Loomis when she meets him during the film, tells him about how in 78, after he ki did, killed those four, five people, he was apprehended by the police, and he's been in here ever since. Dr. Loomis has since passed away, and now he is in his care. And he's about to be moved to a different facility, which comes right out of Halloween 4. These podcasters meet Michael. We don't see his face. It's so short a side of his face, and it's in this very Kubrick shot um, like exercise yard scene and he's in this yellow circle and he's chained off and Michael doesn't respond but they have his mask why did the district attorney gave his mask but they did and then we're reintroduced to Laurie Strode now Lord this Laurie Strode is a very broken Laurie Strode I would say even more broken than H2O of Laurie Strode and H2O she was a functioning alcoholic she was the headmistress at this private school in this one, she's even more damaged. Um, the PTSD of that night has weighed heavily on her, cost her her relationship with her daughter who got taken away from her when she was 11 years old. And she has a strained relationship with her daughter to this day, and she gets to see her granddaughter sometimes. But her granddaughter is pretty understanding. Andy Madchuk, Andy Madchuk is really good as the granddaughter, Allison, in this film. So is Drury Gere as her daughter. And as we all know, Michael escapes. There's a bus crash, Michael escapes. And Lori is on the hunt along with Officer Hawkins, who we learn was there that night when they discovered the bodies. He worked for Hattonfield Police Department. He's still an officer for the Hattonfield Police Department. And Sheriff Brack is no longer around, although I do believe he shows up in Halloween Kills. I'm trying to not know too much about Halloween Kills. I've probably already seen too much about the trailer. And Michael's back on the loose wreaking havoc across Hattonfield, killing people in very violent ways. We have a gas station scene with the two podcasters when they make their faithful end, and he gets his mask back in a very iconically shot scene. And as we go forward, basically it's Lori and the, the police department looking for Michael, and now her daughter realizes that her mother wasn't crazy all these years. Michael is back. And we got our final showdown at the Strode household, and they like lock Michael. They set a trap for him in his basement that Lori's been planning for forever and they burn the house around him, and they get away, and that's the end of Halloween 2018. Things to love about this film. James Drew Courtney is a great Michael Myers, and the mask has never looked better since probably, I think Rob Zombie's mask in his films look pretty good, but it probably hasn't looked this good since the original film. They never could get the mask right. Part six, probably 
from two, even though two is the same mask, supposedly, just a little bit worn. From two, four is definitely a different mask. I'm not a huge fan of that mask, although I like that film. Five, I'm not a huge fan of that mask. Six is probably one of my other favorite masks. And then Zombie has a good mask. Um, the one H2O is a, a disaster. Um, there's, it's a legend about how disastrous that mask is and the many iterations they had of it. Um, the mask in this film is really well done and Michael looks great. James Good Courtney is definitely a great Michael Myers, probably my second favorite behind Nick Castle at this point. And it's nice to know that Nick Castle played Michael in a few scenes. I think the acting is pretty good. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis does a great job coming back as Laurie Strode. Judy Gurr is good as her not very believing daughter. Um, she's definitely very dismissive of her mother and blames her mother for years of her fail well lost childhood. Um, Annie Magic is really good as the granddaughter. I really like her in this role. I'm glad she's in the next one and I'm assuming she'll be in Halloween Ends. We'll see. I don't know what happens in the next film. We'll find out this week. Um, overall, I think David Gordon Green does a nice job of the directing. The score by Carpenter is fantastic. Um, I like the setting, the way they shot. They shot this in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. The one that comes, the Halloween Kills that comes out this week was shot in Wilmington and I heard they're going to shoot Halloween Ends in Savannah, Georgia. Why they're switching again, I don't know, but I'm sure it's about money more than anything else. Now, the mask is great. I think the portrayal of Michael's great. I think the acting's pretty damn good. I think the script overall is pretty good, hitting the beats we need to hit and bringing back some memories from the original film. And Carpenter's score is fantastic. I like the way the film shot. Definitely sets the Halloween mood for sure. Now, the one elephant in the room for this film, I know this is a lot big point of contention for a lot of folks, is the character of Dr. Sartain. Because when he makes his turn to heal, about three quarters of the way through the film, it's out of nowhere. Yes, this doctor's a little off in the beginning when we meet him, and when he's talking to Will Patton after he gets shot and he's hurt, he comes off as a little bit of an odd duck, but he spends all day around these crazy people, so he's probably a little off. And he's definitely totally different as Dr. Loomis, although, like I said, Lori, even Stephen Curtis during the film, references him, oh, you're the new Loomis when she meets him. But when he makes the turn to heal and stabs Will Patton's Officer Hawkins in the throat with a knife, because he doesn't want Michael to die, he wants to witness him out in the wild, they don't build it up enough. So it comes out of nowhere. Now, when I first saw it, it was jarring, but I kind of left it go. The second time I saw it, I'm like, yeah, I can see why some people really hate that, because it comes out of nowhere. They don't even set it up. And maybe there was footage that was cut to make the movie a little shorter, because I heard the first cut was two hours and 15 minutes long, and David Gordon Green said he had to cut some fat to get it down. So I don't know. That has always been the elephant room for a lot of folks, that character and that plot twist when he turns and stabs the cop and tries to get Michael to meet Lori to see what happens. They don't build it up enough for this guy to just all of a sudden just turn into an evil son of a bitch, and he does. So that character is definitely a love it or hate it character, or some people can ignore it or forgive it. I think it drops the rating down a little bit in this film. They don't set it up enough, and it just comes out of nowhere. And when it happens, it's kind of quite jarring. But every else thing else about this film, I think is a damn good sequel to the original film. And probably, it might be, it might take me a few more years to think about this, it might be my favorite sequel besides the original, and well, I didn't see Kills yet, so we'll see on Thursday night. But I think this is a really well done way to reboot the franchise and continue the franchise. I gotta give David Gordon Green props. He directs the films nicely. Um, there's some really nice shots, especially that one shot deal where Michael goes up the driveway, grabs the hammer, goes in the house. We've all seen it if you love this film or seen it multiple times. I would give Halloween 2018, I would give it an eight and a half out of 10. I think it's a really well done sequel. The Dr. Sartain thing brings it down a little bit because that's like a holy shit, what the hell's going on moment. But overall, I think it's a really successful reboot to the franchise. I really enjoy it. So yes, eight and a half out of 10 for Halloween 2018. What are your thoughts on this sequel? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Are you going to see Halloween Kills this weekend? Let me know down below. If you're just as excited as I am, um, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video. We would appreciate that. I'll be back on Thursday, well, Friday, with my out of the theater reaction to Halloween Kills. Until then, bye.